Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too, Too Real. Real. Too. My name is Michael E. Collins II, and with me, as always, is. Is uh, Matthew Morris Haas. Oh, okay. That's a good name to have. Yep. You should dye your hair blonde? Like, real blonde? Yep. That's good. And that nice and leafy, you know? Mm hmm. Become the all American surfer boy. Yep. Got the waves going. Yep. That's good. So, yep. So, uh, before we get started here, um, you know how there's been all these mergers in Hollywood lately? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to announce a merger that I've done. I've decided to, uh, I did an acquisition actually. I um, I bought myself some Pepsi. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I'm drinking it right now. Oh, oh, how is that a merger? Well, the the Pepsi is now inside my body. Oh, okay. So I've merged with Pepsi. Well, technically, <clears throat> you have. Are you like Pepsi Man then, like the video game that came out? Yes, I am. You are Pepsi Man. Awesome. Yes. You know, <clears throat> speaking of Pepsi Man. I never understood the concept. Of, I mean, I understood the concept of the game, but I never understood <clears throat> what they were going for because the whole premise of the game... By the way, Pepsi invented this game, okay? It was a free game, I think, that came with, like, <clears throat> Pepsi or, or you could order it or I don't know. And so Pepsi, the product or company, made this game to promote Pepsi. And the concept of the game is that everything in the world turns to Pepsi and you have to stop that from happening. Again, the company itself made this game to promote its own product. Why would you do that? Like, your your product's now the enemy of the world? What? Well, what like, you're trying to do is, because if everything becomes Pepsi, then nobody can buy Pepsi, because it just, Pepsi exists, and... Everywhere. Oh, I guess. Maybe that's what they were getting at. I don't yeah. know. It's, but, all, it's um, all about capitalism. Yeah, but I don't think the average player would have gotten that message. So, so like, you know, like a high-minded scholar or philosopher such as yourself could read between the lines, but your average 16-year-old player of that game probably wouldn't have got that message. They're sitting there thinking, like, oh, no, there's too much Pepsi. we got to get rid of the Pepsi. Wait, what? But Pepsi made the game to promote itself. Why? Anyway... Well, that's you mentioned Pepsi, and I thought of Pepsi Man. That's what happened. But um, yes. So um, <laughs> today on the show, <laughs> <laughs> we are covering the pilot for the short-lived sitcom that aired on NBC in 1993 and 94, entitled "Saved by the Bell: The College Years." Which is a interesting title because I think it didn't even last a whole season. <clears throat> Nineteen episodes, at least. Yeah. Um, so, so it's not really years per se. I guess it ran from ninety three to ninety four. So technically, it's <clears throat> years. The college year. Yeah. Or the or the the majority of a college year. Yeah, it's like college freshman year. <clears throat> <clears throat> then our favorite characters just like died or something. Don't know what happened to them. But um, yep. So, yep. E actually, we do know what happened because then they had the 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 wedding in Vegas movie. Oh, right. Yeah. Exactly. They had so many of those. <clears throat> like, I forgot how like how much TV was saturated by Saved by the Bell during that time. Like, like I knew about the show and stuff, but I forgot all about like these special summer series they would have like in hawaii that was like four episodes long then they would have like 
Well, the another thing, like the interesting thing about the like Malibu Sands episode where they were at this uh, beach beach uh, resort, mm-hmm. and these other ones, they're called adventure episodes. And um, they actually, right. the way they aired, it was really weird. They'd air like a regular episode, and then right after it, the same morning, air like the Malibu Sands episode. Oh really? And then, the, then the <laughs> next week they do the same. So you have this continuing storyline going on at Bayside, but then you have this continuing storyline that was like in an alternate universe where they were at this Malibu Sands. Right. <clears throat> it's very kind of like disorienting a little bit. Um, I seem to remember some of them airing at night though, or evening. Maybe I'm wrong, but um... oh, so some things did. I mean, Saved by the Bell of College Years wasn't was wasn't e- was a, a sitcom at night. Okay. Um, they did have movies at night. Those were like okay. those were like the movies, like like Saved by the Bell, um, like the Hawaiian thing or whatever. That was a movie. Um, that aired, I think, probably in the in the prime time. And then they cut it up okay. into like they cut it up into like three <coughs> three or four episodes. Okay. For uh, to for syndication. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. So the so the, the regular Saved by the Bell ended, and the continuation of Saved by the Bell, they did two different sitcoms: one in one in prime time, and another one on Saturday mornings. They did uh, Saved by the Bell: The New Class in the mornings on Saturdays, and uh, they did this college years that we're covering. In the evening. So, you had two Saved by the Bell shows on at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And then this one got canceled, and then um, <clears throat> Dustin Diamond, a.k.a. Samuel Screech Powers, um, he, uh, he ended up joining the new class the second season as uh, the administrative assistant to Mr. Belding. <laughs> so that that that's the story of that Saved by the Bell era, and then currently now we do have a new Saved by the Bell as well on Peacock. Right. Yeah. Which I've seen every episode of, and it's great actually. So. Okay. Highly recommended, folks. It's cheesy as fuck, but it's good. Um, <laughs> Just like the regular original, yeah. <clears throat> it was cheesy as fuck. So. Yeah. And, uh, so, the, um, episode we are covering is called Pilot. <laughs> of course. Hence why it's a pilot. Um, the, uh, so what happens in this episode here, Matt? Um, <clears throat> well, we have this killer intro song that's like one of the best songs ever written in the history of uh, well, history of songwriting I guess um, oh yeah where it's like standing on the edge of tomorrow and it's got this cool like chugging guitar riff and it's like digga, digga, digga. it's like really fast like a tremolo type of like digga, 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 digga. and it's like standing on the edge of tomorrow today today and then the guy's voice echoes like 15 times after it that's pretty sweet and then it goes into Zach looking all college walking through the halls of his dorm, and he's, you know, doing this typical narration of what, you know, college life's going to be all about and all this kind of stuff. And then he ends up going into what he thinks is his um, dorm room uh, because it's like a co-ed dorm. And, you know, typical Zach Morris being a fucking idiot um, <clears throat> thinks that he share, he's sharing the room with the the women like that's not what co-ed means you fucking moron anyway um so like they kick him out and then he finds slater who of course is his roommate because every single person who went to bayside apparently is going to the same university called california university not even sure if that's a real university or not maybe it is it's but not, it's uh not, it's not <laughs> just he's california it's like okay it's such a uh it's just like a generic name. 
Yeah. Cal, and then, uh, Cal U. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Cal U. And then, uh, you know, he's like flirting with the woman. Like, her name is Leslie Berg, uh, which is interesting because she doesn't even introduce her, her name in that scene. And then when he walks into his his suite and talks to Slater, and he's like, yeah, Leslie, the tall one. I'm like, well, she never even said her name. So that's interesting editing failure at that point right there. But, um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I watched it four times, so I've got a lot of a memory on it. And, uh, wow. Yeah, I can't believe I watched the episode four times. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> and, you know, Slater's got all of his workout equipment, Zach, because it's them to you know move it out because doesn't want it to look like tacky or whatever to the girls and they're like yeah man like we're, we're we gotta look cool and stuff like that then oh screech shows up you know like oh hi screech and he was of course he's going to this california university too because you know why why would they all go to different colleges like every friend that i went to high school with we all went to the same college, and we all stayed in the same place. We all took the same classes together. Of course, that's what always happens, isn't it? And um, <clears throat> so Screech um, convinced you know the you know registration people or whatever to let him you know be their third roommate. And they're like, oh man, like Screech is gonna you know cramp our style type of thing or whatever. And uh, it's interesting. <clears throat> so. If you're familiar with the the YouTube channel Zach Morris is Trash, which I highly recommend, it's hilarious. Um, a big theme in that is how Zach treats like Screech like shit throughout their entire friendship, and pretty much just like manipulates and brainwashes him to like do his bidding. And it's very telling because you know three months away out of high school, without Zach constantly manipulating him, Screech has a little bit of self confidence. Very interesting, you know that you know. Time away from your best friend makes you a better person. Hmm. It's if, interesting. Maybe if maybe they were away, who knows? Him. Maybe during the summer they were together. No, in my mind, he was away from Zach for three months. And then, <laughs> and then, that's that's my canon. And then, uh, and then you know he's still like you know geeky and dork, but he he's he's not like shy and nervous and stuff like that. And I guess he never really was, but like he you know like for example, like they have like this house party later on, and like this really hot girl. You know, wants to have a slow dance with him because he's really good at like you know computer science and they're in the same class together or whatever. And it's like you know that never would have happened in high school. If it did, Zach would have swooped in and want to you know dance with that woman you know instead of Screech and then you know push him away and tell him to go play with his robot or some bullshit. You know, you know, because Zach Morris is a piece of shit. But um, and you know, and he, he you know he he reverts to his his normal his characteristics of like within 15 minutes of this episode because you know why why start your new life with like a new leaf why not just keep doing the same bullshit you've been doing for the past seven fucking years of your life <clears throat> or even longer than that and they got like this really like buff like resident you know dude like ra or whatever his name is he's like just like former 49ers liner linebacker or whatever yes. and he's like you're not gonna break any of my rules rule number one no parties Rule number two, no no alcohol on the premises whatsoever. You know, pretty cool dude. Yeah, and, uh, played by Bob, Bob Golick, who is yeah, plays, Bob Golick. He plays Michael Rogers. Yeah, Michael Rogers. Yes. Actually, I think he's like one of my favorite characters in the oh, show. Oh, he is. And uh, Bob Golick was a former um, NFL player. so he, Oh, really? Yeah. He never played for the 49ers, though. Oh, okay. Yes. Um... He uh yeah and his his brother is a sportscaster too, Mike Gullick, which is okay. interesting because his name is Mike on the show, um, <laughs> right, yeah, um the uh so basically they, they they move in you know and they got the whole thing going on um uh Slater has a job at the uh, student union. As a like bus boy, basically, mm -hmm. or a waiter, or whatever the hell he is, <laughs> where where he uh, thinks all the girls are gonna love him, and they don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, he right. also Slater's also having his issues where he's not the best wrestler anymore, <clears throat> right? So like on the wrestling team, he's like basically. 
low man on the totem pole sort of thing, you know? And so it's like trying to deal with the fact that he was like, he was all state in four, in, in four sports. Did you know that? No. Yes. So I've been, wow. li- I've been listening to this podcast called, uh, Zach to the future. <laughs> which is which is a, a really great podcast. It's uh hosted by Mark Paul Gossler and uh um Dashiell Driscoll. And Dashiell is the guy that created the Zach Morris's trash okay things cool. um and and does the narration on all those. Um those two host it and Mark has never seen Mark Paul, I mean, has never seen a single episode of Say by the Bell. So they're going through and re, re and, and he's watching it for the first time and then wow. talking about it because he just hates watching himself act. So he's never watched it. So it's really, it's a, it's, it's one of my favorite podcasts right now that's out there. Um, it sounds like me. Yeah. I'm, I'm like very embarrassed to watch anything I've ever been in. Yeah. Uh, me too. So, um, you know, like, yeah. I think oh, you're like, embarrassed to watch me. Okay. That's, that's nice. Yeah. I'm always embarrassed to watch you, man. <laughs> I just like, oh God, Matt. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm joking. No, no. <laughs> yeah. The um, no, I, I I don't like watching myself. Most I think most people don't really like watching themselves. You know, if you do, you're like Donald Trump or something. And um, the uh, or Ben Shapiro or some kind of narcissist. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Um, the uh. Yeah, but but anyways, um, the show is great. That that, but uh, they did talk about it, and they're like, it's mentioned in one of the episodes of of the original series that he's he's all state in four different sports. Not sure what all four sports those are, but one of them is wrestling. So, <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't think they ever showed him or all they show or all fast. city, all sto- all city, maybe, maybe all city. Hey, they may have, may have shown him play basketball at one episode, I think, or something. I don't know. Um, I mean, he was on the football team. He, uh... Right. Yeah. <clears throat> but they only showed wrestling, really, main, yeah. for the main point. Yeah, because they didn't have the money to... Right, yeah. You know, just... go, go on a football field and shoot a football <laughs> game or anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, so... <clears throat> anyways, um... So, so that's what's going on with Slater. Um, what else is happening here, Matt? Um, so they have a party um, to um, celebrate um, Leslie's 18th birthday. You know, even though they're not supposed to have parties, and uh, I, I still love just that character of Mike, like, he's such a good actor, because, like, Screech is, like, being kind of dumb, like, what happens if we break, break you know, the rules? And he just kind of, like, has a smile on his face, he's like, break one of my rules? <laughs> what do you think's gonna happen? <laughs> he just has, like, his own <laughs> Anyway, I just, I just love that delivery right there. But, um, so, you know, they throw a party, um, you know, to, you know, celebrate a birthday, and people have brought their own alcohol, which, you know, it wasn't, you know, Zach didn't, you know, um, you know, supply it himself or anything like that. They just, they brought it their own. And things start to kind of get a little messy because uh, Slater invited his wrestling team there. And one of the guys basically ate like an, an entire cake that was the birthday cake for Leslie. But it was also like big enough for everyone else to have like a little bit of two. And it's like. <clears throat> not not the not the nitpick here, but like, so like I know with wrestling and stuff, like there's weight classes and stuff like that where if you gain weight, but like from what I understood, you're supposed to eat certain kinds of foods, like not just anything, like protein mainly. Like you're not supposed to eat like a birthday cake. Like I don't know, but like that's kind of what I got the gist of when I, when I would hear like you know people who are on the wrestling team talk about stuff like that. Like I. I, I don't think you're just supposed to just eat just yeah. anything. You know what I mean? Like, you're not just like, oh, I'm going to drink a gallon of Coke and eat McDonald's. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but anyway, so, um, you know, she, you know, her, her, one of her roommates, um, who's sadly only in the first episode. And then, uh, I don't even know her name. 
was it Valerie? Because she was only in like two scenes. Of the, the character's name is... <laughs> Danielle Marks was the character's name. And, oh, that's right, um, Danielle. Yeah, it was played by Essen, Essence Adkins, <clears throat> who later went on to star in uh, Smart Guy as uh, TJ's sister on that show. Well, there you go. Yeah, so she she did well after this. But she's only in this episode because she's replaced by Tiffany Amber Thiessen in the next episode. Um, As Kelly Kapowski. Yeah, because things happened and she was available to now be in the show. So again, now we got four four of the old gang in college together at the same university in the same dorm hall in the same suite how what are the odds right the only person who's not there is jesse <clears throat> well and, and, uh, and, and lisa jesse and lisa of course yeah, yeah. There there's six of them okay so four yeah. out of six and, um yeah because i think at that point jesse was probably doing showgirls or some shit i don't know or the actor played yeah. jesse uh, and, um which um i never saw but i heard like it was a terrible movie like some of the worst reviews ever made. Um, it's okay. So, so I watched it when I was a younger yeah. younger man, and mm-hmm. there, there's there, there's nudity in the movie, right? Obviously, so it's kind of sad. Where me and my friend Steve were watching it one time, and about I don't know, fifteen minutes to a half hour in the movie, we didn't care about the fact that there was nudity because the movie was so bad. Right, yeah. And, 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 I mean, when, and when you're a young man in your 20s, or whatever I was at the time, or, you know, teenage years, whatever I was, um, it's kind of kind of sad when you just are upset that the plot sucks. <laughs> <clears throat> exactly, like, it just ruins it for you. Like, um, you know, because, like, back in the day, like, you know, you know, there wasn't, like, stuff available like it is now which you know <clears throat> one can argue whether it's a good thing or a bad thing whatever i'm not going to get into that that subject but like you know you had to get really creative about stuff like oh i'm gonna write this movie you know or whatever <laughs> i gotta pause it at the right time you know <laughs> or, or um you know like sometimes like when i was like 13 or something like that i had my friend over you know the sleepover and we used to like look through like the hbo like TV guy to see like what was on <laughs> like oh there's a movie called The Joy of Sex at 1 o'clock in the morning on Friday or whatever <laughs> so like we like arrange it you know so he can stay over at night and we watch it and we watch, we're we sitting there watching this movie for like an hour and we're like there's really nothing going on in this fucking movie what the hell and then, and then we had to keep changing the channel because people keep going getting up into the bathroom and stuff and then eventually we just like played video games till we fell asleep so like you know Adolescence or slash young adulthood, you know, interesting times. Um, that's, that's how it is. <clears throat> back uh, then, though, and I guess I will get into it a little bit, but I think back then, you know, it's just natural for people to do those little things because you're, you know, you're you're starting to mature and stuff like that. But like, like starting out with that, you know, I think is much healthier than like just starting out with whatever available is right now. <laughs> Like it's just so yeah. Like it, it's like it's just unhealthy in my just in my personal opinion. It, um, it's it's unhealthy. Um, you know, being like that age and like just having like everything available to you, like just anything possible. Like you know, no limits. Just like no, anyway, how we got this for saving a belt. Anyway, um, <laughs> but anyways, um, do you want to yeah. take a want to take a quick break here, Matt? Yeah, just hit the bell and the subscribe button, and then. No. Wait. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and, and, and if you're watching us, if you're listening to this on uh, on YouTube, um, I, I'm trying to figure out why everybody listens to uh, um, American Pie Girls Rules. We've got 15,000 15, views on that. That's more, that's more than we have on anything else combined. So right. So that's just weird. Okay, so yeah. anyways... Just, just curious about that. So if anybody has yeah. the answer to that, message me at Mike at CullenPark.com. Anyways, we'll be right back. What is Gen X? 
What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there So then, um, after I uh, was, uh, you know, doing my bottomless ice dancing, um, <laughs> I uh, I became a, a bottomless showgirl. <clears throat> so you, you changed your John Coolsack name to like something yeah, else. It was um, uh, um it was uh, Elizabeth uh, Freaky, and um, <laughs> wow, I don't know. I'm just making this up, folks. I didn't yeah, really we are. do we that. Both are. Sorry, folks. Just letting you know. Unfortunately, I never was a bottomless ice dancer. I it's, made that whole thing up in the last couple episodes. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's it's, it's fine. See, because my life is just meaningless, and I thought that maybe I'd have some meaning if I did something in my life that meant meant something to people, <clears throat> like bottomless for, ice dancing. For you, yeah, for you, that was bottomless ice dancing. Yeah, when, when when I was a kid, <clears throat> living in the suburbs. Wait, I never lived in the suburbs. Um, living in in no. the city, I uh, I thought, hey, one day, I'm gonna move to Vegas and become a bottomless ice dancer. Yeah. It's kind of weird that I was thinking that when I was like five, but yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, yeah. By the way, that that bit originates from our our Duck Factory episode. If you're interested in that, um, yes. This this is a Jim bit. Carrey. This is a bit. Wait, what? Well, kind of a bit, isn't it? Oh wait, I thought it was true. Oh wait, no. well you just said you just said it was a lie. Oh shit! <laughs> I can't do this, man. You can't keep your story straight. So, <coughs> I couldn't skate straight either because it was kind of <laughs> hard. Um, anyway, so <laughs> back to Saved by the Bell, the college years. Um, yeah. What else happens in this episode? So, we have this party going on. <clears throat> yeah, the party. <clears throat> the, the the wrestler dude makes fun of Slater, so he's, he says he's going to quit wrestling because he can't take quote the abuse anymore which is really just people making fun of him a little bit which is yeah, but he was never used to that so he, he was always the cool guy so he's not used to that so to him that's like a huge deal you know like a bunch of guys like making cracking jokes about him like yeah you're like you're like a mechanic you're always on the always on your back or whatever type of thing you know like okay <clears throat> so um you know um zach's still trying to get in with leslie and she's dancing with some other guy yeah, like, I mean, basically, he threw this party just to kind of impress her. Yeah, pretty much. It's typical Zach, typical Zach Morris behavior. And, um, so uh, Mike shows up. Not not you, a different Mike. The Mike from the show shows up, and <clears throat> not you with your skates and your bottomless. You know, you didn't show up with your ice skates and door <clears throat> or whatever. No, I didn't. You know, exposing yourself. No, it was the Mike from the show. He shows up, and he's like get out, party's over, blah, 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 you know, typical RA stuff or whatever. And then he's like, then they, you know, figure out how to, you know, how to punish them. 
So, uh, you know, he's like, you know, Zach tries to take the blame, you know, which is actually interesting for him because he typically tries to get out of trouble. So at this, there's a little bit of emotional maturity finally after like seven years of plotting plotting schemes. That pretty much means the same thing. Hatching schemes, um, you know, finally he's willing to take the fall. But the Mike doesn't let him, you know, because they all they all contributed, so they all have to equally be punished, and so they can either get you know get kicked kicked out of the dorm, or they gotta have curfew for a whole month, or they had to sign up every freshman into some I forgot something. They, they, they had like, they, they had to fill out a survey. That's right, a survey three thousand freshmen though. Yeah, and then Zach like an idiot. Of course, because that's how, how he is. He just jumps to any bullshit opportunity he thinks he has. Which, again, it's like curfew for a month. Not that bad. I mean, it's a month. You're in school for nine, ten months a year. Yeah, that's not bad at all. One month of curfew is not that big of a deal. Or whatever. So, like an idiot, he jumps to the idea, oh, we'll do this. And it's like, oh, wait, now you got to sign up 3,000 people. And they're like, well... You know, that's going to take forever. And Mike's like, yeah, that's the beauty of it, you know, type of thing. So then Zach going, reverting back to his high school and junior high ways. By the way, there's an episode where he loses his teacher's almost entire savings to invest in a freaking potato scheme and loses all of her money. So, so that, that's the kind of person Zach Morris is, okay? Hardworking teacher who supposedly is his favorite teacher his favorite adult in his entire life besides his parents, yeah, just takes all her money and invests all of it into some fucking potato company because he heard some stock guy talk about potatoes being the future or some bullshit. So he's like, oh, get rich, quick, great, I'll just take Was all this my Was this during the Good Morning money. Miss Bliss year, sir? Yes, it is. Oh, yes, okay. good morning. <laughs> so, so he ended up almost bankrupting and, and rendering his favorite teacher homeless. So this is the kind of person Zach Morris is. And always will be. But anyway, so he, he has he has a brilliant idea. Oh, well, you know, it'll take too long to actually do, like, any leg work because why would Zach Morris ever actually put in, like, some elbow grease? Well, that's kind of a wrong analogy because I said leg work. Whatever. Put in any kind of hard labor in, into anything he does. No. He always has to streamline it and to be more, quote, efficient, <clears throat> which usually means that he's cheating in some way or deceiving people in order to to fulfill his little fantasy he's got going. So he comes up with the idea of having some, like, contest where you can win a trip to Hawaii. Oh, but here's the clincher. There is no trip to Hawaii. Ah, ha, ha, You know, typical Zach Morris nonsense. Yep. So Mike shows up, and he knows, because he, he already had Zach pegged from the beginning. He knew just who this type of guy is, you know. So he, he tries to kind of talk to him like he agrees with them like oh man like i used to be just like you and yeah i love these little schemes you play you know you probably used to do these at all the time in high school right he's like yeah man i was like the king he's like yeah but guess what zach is like what you're not in high school anymore <laughs> if you if you have a context contest for a prize there better be better be a prize at the end of it yep so basically yeah <laughs> it's uh, uh yeah i mean and you, you can't uh do the uh you know total high school schemes like you used to and you know you're an adult now zach um yeah and so zach ends up having to get a job then at the uh student union with uh slater to uh to to pay for it yep and this is how little zach still understands about money even after all we're talking about eight years of trying to get rich, and he still doesn't understand, you know, the basic fundamentals of how money works. Like, it's actually quite astonishing <clears throat> that he has a part of his brain that just hatches schemes, like, in his sleep, but he can't understand, like, the fundamental value of, like, a dollar over time. It's just quite astonishing. So, like, he makes this joke about, like, oh, well, I guess I'll have this trip, you know, um, <clears throat> paid off by my junior year or whatever. Oh, yeah, because there was a scene where there was, like, this woman that was being really mean to Slater earlier, so then Zach paid her $20 to flirt with Slater, and then, um... <clears throat> and then he gives her $20, right, afterwards. Yeah. And he's like, 
oh, I guess I'll be paying off in senior year. And it's like, wait, you think an extra $20 on top of a ticket to Hawaii is going to extend your payment plan a full year? Really? Well, well, wow. ba- ba- back back in 1993, people only got paid a nickel an hour, and um, okay, sure, yeah, and uh, <laughs> I mean, what a dumbass! Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, just use like you, you don't even have to be good at math. Just use like basic logic. Like, okay, you got a ticket that's probably three thousand dollars. I'm guessing the Hawaii a trip, or if not even more than that, five thousand even. Because we're not just talking about a plane ticket, we're talking about an actual trip. So we're looking at probably three thousand, five thousand dollars, and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna be." By the way, five thousand dollars, nineteen ninety four time, he would still be paying that stuff off way after he even he graduated college. So right there, he's already wrong, right there. And then he's like, "Oh, next twenty dollars on top of three thousand dollars. That's gonna extend my payment plan a whole year." It's like, dude, twenty dollars and three thousand dollars. It's a pretty big gap. Anyway. But we're talking about Zach Morris here, who doesn't know shit about shit. So I fucking hate that guy so much. Anyway, um, what else happened? But we love Mark Paul Gosler because he's nothing like the character. Oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the actor is great. Just sure, letting you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Like I agree. I'm not making. Fun he's of not him. even I'm blonde. Just... He's not even fully white. So, but that yeah. just proves how good of an actor he is that he makes me hate that character so yes. much. So that just proves it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So is that about all that happens in this episode? <clears throat> is it? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. We recovered Screech's confidence. Yeah. boosting because Zach hasn't been manipulating him. Well, you said they could have spent all summer together. In my mind, they haven't. But um, yes, <clears throat> Slater doesn't quit the team after all because Zach schemed. I guess Zach scheming actually helped this time, which it rarely does. But that actually, yeah, it seems like helped. Zach kind of more cares about people in this, <clears throat> at least in this episode. He does. I mean, I watched like ten episodes today, so he progressively he does I mean, he still does really dangerous scheming like at one episode he actually pretends to be his an- cultural anthropology professor because he wants to seduce a student that's really into his work and then he almost gets his professor fired because it turns out that the woman is the chancellor's daughter and it's extremely forbidden for, for professors and students to each other so like that's a pretty dangerous scheme right there fucking with someone's livelihood and um so yeah wow yep check that what episode out it's very interesting yeah i kind of remember it i haven't seen the whole series in a long time but i used to watch it all the time yeah yeah that's Um, probably the worst what he's ever done (laughs) yeah i don't know over the years zach's done a lot of bad shit (laughs) Yeah, that's right. all I'm going to say. If 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 anybody in the world did like a quarter of the things that Zach Morris has done, they'd be in jail for the rest of their lives. Oh, for sure. I mean, we got um, you know, sneaking in the girls um bathrooms and wash um not washrooms, uh gym, whatever yeah. the locker room, there you go. Um taking pictures of them which I'm sure at least some of them were minors at some point, just from a just from a statistical point of view. That's yeah. not good. Uh, and making calendars out of them and mm. selling them to adults. Um, yeah, that one's probably the worst. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just one scheme. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and that's just one of the many. Um, yeah. If you have, haven't watched Saved by the Bell, I suggest it. It's very and, interesting. And watch it through the the lens of Zach Morris's trash because yes. it really it really gives you a different perspective of like how dangerous these schemes really were, <laughs> like and how stupid Mr. Belding was. Um. Anyway, so uh, it, most idiotic pr- principle of all time. Yeah. Anyways, do you want to take another break here, Matt, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some trivia and some reviews of this uh, wonderful show? Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back.
Need a new podcast to listen to? Well, why not check out the Super Podcast from the Super Network at supermarcy.com where we discuss films and pop culture and we do monthly fan-voted commentaries. We are available on all major podcasting platforms. And we are back. <clears throat> I think I just lost my voice for a second there. That was weird. And we are back. Okay, anyways. Back. <laughs> so, um, here's some little bit of trivia that I found online here uh, for <clears throat> Saved by the Bell, the college years. All right. Okay. It previewed its pilot episode following the primetime airing of Saved by the Bell graduation finale on Saturday, May 22nd, 1993. The series then had its uh, proper debut with back-to-back episodes on Tuesday, September 14th, 1993. Uh, The pilot originally found the three male leads of Zack, Slater, and Screech attending college together. Their dorm room shared a common space with three co-eds, Alex, Danielle, and Leslie. Um, Leslie, who was intended as a love interest for Zack. Um, following the pilot, Tiffany Amber Thiessen expressed interest in reprising her character of Kelly. To make space in the cast, the producers fired Essence Atkins, who played Danielle, under the explanation that her character had transferred to another school. That's just... Yep. See, so, my thing with this is, it's like, okay, so, so, so we have this cast of mostly <laughs> white people. Besides... Mario Lopez and Essence Atkins and we need to replace one of these characters let's get rid of the black girl right <laughs> what the hell I know I mean I'm not saying that they should have got rid of one of the other ones in my opinion they probably should have actually gotten rid of uh, Leslie because they brought in Tiffany Amber Thiessen and she's Zach's soulmate basically Kelly so right. she's one of the original six yeah so they probably should have got rid of Leslie, but who knows? <laughs> it did give it a different dynamic, though, to the show. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting, but this was the '90s. Um, resident advisor Mike Rogers was initially intended to be the opposing authority figure to Zach and his schemes. Uh, he was portrayed by Bob Golick, a professional athlete who had previously played football for the New England Patriots and the Cleveland Browns and the Los Angeles Raiders. He never actually played for the San Francisco 49ers. Um, the theme song, Standing at the Edge of Tomorrow, was written and arranged by Jonathan Wolfe, a composer whose credits include the main title themes for Seinfeld, Will and Grace, and According to Jim. So that's interesting. Um, the uh, the show was canceled before completing its debut season. Its uh, final two episodes, uh, Marry Me and Wedding Plans, aired back-to-back on Tuesday, February 8th, 1994. These um, episodes saw the return of Saved by the Bell castmate Lisa Turtle, Lark Voorhees, as well as a cliffhanger wedding engagement between Zach and Kelly. Um, the uh, the main cast of both Saved by the Bell and Saved by the Bell, the college years, minus uh, Anne Tremco, who played Leslie, reunited for Saved by the Bell, Wedding in Las Vegas, a TV movie that aired in primetime on October 7th, 1994. The film includes a uh, diamond heist, not of Dustin Diamond, but of a diamond. Just letting you know they didn't heist Dustin Diamond. <laughs> a Gilbert Gottfried cameo and the uh, ceremonial union of Zach and Kelly. Um, following the um, season's cash- cancellation, four further adventures on campus were uh, published in a series of young adult novels with titles such as Freshman Frenzy, Zach Zeroes In, um, and Exit Stage Right. Author Beth Cruz had previously published a series of novels set during the cast high school years at Bayside. So if you want more adventures, there you go. Yeah. Um, so, um, 
there. Uh, would you like me to read a review or two here? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so, we got a 7 out of 10. The, uh, the headline of this one is, Even Screech Grew Up for Good. Mm -hmm. Um, this is from Insomniac Rod, published on November 19th, 2007 on the Internet and Movie Database. Finally, a clever show that follows a plot and it's soon canceled. I mean... We have the most popular cast members of the original series in the most difficult student era of their lives, college. The idea was very interesting, but producers didn't feel it had potential. Some jokes were funny and clever, and so were the situations that had a feeling of maturity towards our characters. Also, new cast members, including teachers, were solid additions to the show. Mike Rogers was a fun character and added some spice to the show. The rest of the cast was uh, cliched, but it's okay. I mean, it displays true life in college. The show had potential, believe me, but you can't go against producers. A cult show in the future, that's for sure. That was a 7 out of 10. <clears throat> here's one called... Wa here, here's one that says, whatever. This okay. is from uh, Vander Girl 2004 published on October 29th, 2002. Okay. I think Saved by the Bell was a great show. I liked the high school times, and when they went to college, it sort of made the show better. I was a little pissed that they took Lisa and Jesse out of it, but it was still good. Um, how can you say that they made it highly unfunny, though? saying that somebody else was wrong about the their review um mm -hmm. throughout the years there was never a dull boring unfunny episode and it wasn't slow and stupid man you need to get your head checked i do agree about the new class i think that was um yeah this is really dated they said <laughs> i think that was gay oh boy that they made that stupid show. I never watched it. I never understood how or why Screech was back in high school. What's up with that? You know, if you watched the show, you might know. Um, yeah. S Slater was my favorite. Um, why do you think Zach would go to college? He's smart, but doesn't show it a lot of the time. It's a place to find babes, as he would say. Right. <laughs> I miss the show. They should have a reunion and have Zach, of course, marry <coughs> Kelly and Screech engaged to Lisa, which would be hilarious. And Slater married to Jesse. And Mr. Belding could possibly have gotten a divorce and married Miss Bliss. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. None of that came to fruition in the new Save by the Bell, by the way, um, except for the yeah. Zach and Kelly thing. Um, <laughs> so, um, what did you think of this, uh, pilot episode, Matt? It was decent. Um, you know, <clears throat> it was very cheesy, like most say by the bell is, but it kind of had, you know, its own, its own charm to it. Um, you know, like I said, I watched like 10 episodes today, so, you know, do you think it's not the, all bad. Do you think the show should have continued after the first season? I think it could have lasted at least two seasons mm -hmm. or, or four, but maybe not like as many episodes per season, like maybe like 13 episodes a season or something like that. Um, yeah. You know, it is kind of hard to fill. I mean, I was surprised that it even got 19 episodes because I thought Saved by the Bell typically only had like 13, 14 episodes a season, but I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. I'd have to I look it up. I, I think they might. I think they might have had like the typical twenty-two or something. Okay. Yeah. But um. Yeah. I liked it. I, I did too. I mean, I, I really liked the show. I used to watch it. Like, it used to be on TBS in the morning or something years ago, and I used mm -hmm. to watch it a lot. Um. 
they used to show like regular Saved by the Bell, and then they would follow it with one of these episodes, which was kind of cool to see. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It it, it was a, it was a good show. Um. I mean, I like sequels and reboots and stuff. I think that's kind of interesting. I I think a lot of times they suck, but I do like to see them. Um. Yeah. That's uh. About all I have to say about that. Anything else before we wrap things up here, Matt? Uh, <coughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, earlier, I just because I was watching so much of the show, I remember that whole um, twenty eight days later thing that was on YouTube or like oh yeah even before YouTube came out. I watched like the first episode. Like it was very dated though. Like. Because like, I remember when I first saw it, I thought it was like the funniest thing ever. And I'm like, like this is okay, I guess. <laughs> this is like, yeah, that, was that, that was like part of that Channel 101 thing that uh, Dan Harmon and uh, oh, what's his face? Yeah. It? yeah. And it was, uh, yeah, so I went ahead. You know, go check that out if you can. I mean, it, it is it's kind of dated, but it's just kind of a, a funny concept, you know, because of the movie 28 Days Later. You yeah. know, about Zob and stuff like that. <laughs> And, like, it's basically the, the premise is that, like, it's Mario Lopez played by someone else, I think. It's not actually Yeah, it's him. not Mario. Yeah. He's, he thinks that he is Slater. Like, that's, like, the whole plot, basically. Like, I'm going to have to look that up again and watch it. I can't remember. Yeah. I, I haven't, probably haven't seen that in, like, ten years or so. Yeah. Um, check that out. Um yeah, I, I'm, like I said, I do recommend listening to the uh, Zach to the Future podcast if you're a friend. If you're yeah. a, if you're a friend, I mean a fan of uh, of uh, Say by the Bell in general. Um, friend of Say by the Bell, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a pretty uh, fun podcast. Um, also, uh, you know, rest in peace, Dustin Diamond. Um, yeah, yeah, forty four years old, man. That's too young. Um, I know. Yeah. It's like a year older than me. And um, make sure you, uh, you know, do us a favor. Uh, check out our Patreon. Um, check out our uh, T Public. You can get some uh, cool T-shirts. We do have a new T-shirt on there um, from our previous episode that we did. Um, it, the uh, T-shirt is called uh, Sebastian Go Fuck Yourself. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a it's, great, it's a great T-shirt. Yep. From um, our Little, Little Burbades Island episode. Yes. And um, <laughs> check that out. Um, make sure you subscribe to our show. Share it with people if you can. Um, that really helps out. Give us a five-star review on uh, on Apple Podcasts or whatever the hell they're calling it this week. And um, <laughs> they changed the name of the thing from time to time. I don't know why. It, was, it used to be iTunes, it's, but they got rid of that. And then now they're... Yeah. Yeah. They want to change things up, man, you know? <clears throat> yeah, just give us a review anywhere you can. Um, share share the show, like I said. Um, you know, check out all2real2.com. That's our website where you can find everything there. Um, but uh, besides that, make sure you, uh, you know, get vaccinated, people. There's, there's no microchips in there. There's no potato chips. There's no chocolate chips. There's no, uh, you know, Eric Estrada in the cast of chips. There's nothing in there. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. <laughs> so just letting you know that. So, you know, at least that's what the overlords have told me to tell you. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> wait, <laughs> so, uh, anyways, um, until next time, folks, bye bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.